open an email, like a post, watch this video. You may be sitting still, but everything on the World Wide Web is propped up by a complex foundation of networks, infrastructure, and electricity. Every email you send, every question you search, every video you watch, they all require processing power. And that requires a lot of, well, power. If the factory powered the industrial age, the data center does the same for the information age. Cutting the carbon footprint of growing electricity-hungry industries like data centers is a huge endeavor and an important part of limiting climate change, which is why the world's most popular search engine wants to tackle that challenge. Which search engine? Just Google it. Google began with this stack of servers back in 1998. Now, it manages football fields of computing hardware at over 20 data centers around the world. All data centers, including Google's, rely on a steady flow of electricity around the clock. And when that energy comes from fossil fuels, it produces a lot of carbon pollution. In response, Google has been reducing its carbon footprint for over a decade. In 2007, Google became the first major company to go carbon neutral. Being carbon neutral means that, you know, you're still emitting carbon into the atmosphere from your operations. You're just going out and you're buying offsets to cover that. So you're planting trees, you're capturing methane emissions from landfills, but you're not changing the way you actually operate. You're going out and you're buying offsets to sort of zero those out. It's almost like an accounting exercise. So Google started buying renewable energy directly. And by 2017, they were matching 100% of their energy consumption with renewable energy on a global basis. But even that's not enough to fully reduce its emissions because there are places and times of the day where the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Google wants to solve that problem and straight up eliminate carbon from its data centers and campuses. They've set a goal to run on 24 seven carbon free energy by 2030, everywhere they operate. If they can pull this off, they'll be the first company of their scale to completely cut carbon out of their electric usage. So how to get there? First, when we contract for energy, we'll mix and match technologies like solar, wind, and battery storage. Second, we're advancing new technology approaches, whether it's in machine learning or clean energy. And lastly, we're working to advance public policies that help drive more clean energy on electricity grids everywhere we operate. For the first pillar, Google has proposed the largest purchase of corporate solar power and battery storage to date near its Henderson, Nevada data center. And in European countries, with less sun but plentiful breeze, Google is buying wind power by the megawatt. For the second step, they're leveraging a machine learning system to predict wind farm output and optimize for times when the grid is cleanest. But the third step, getting public policy changed, might be the hardest. Google is accelerating development of new technologies, inventing ways to conduct clean energy deals, and convincing institutions, public and private, that clean energy is smart policy. But cutting carbon completely out of the energy equation requires an all hands on deck approach. It needs public support and a willing supply chain. Even when Google does reach zero carbon emissions, they are only setting an example. It's on other businesses to follow their example, and there's not much time to do so. The time is now, you know, we have actually reached a point with the development of technology and tools to decarbonize electricity that we can actually do this. We can run the economy on carbon-free electricity all the time. More people are moving online every day, all day. That is increasing the need for clean energy. But Google is taking on the challenge of fundamentally changing the way the world uses electricity. By 2030, you'll still be on the internet, but a cleaner, smarter one 24 seven.